<laughs> hey y'all. Beautiful evening out here, Texas Hill Country. Yes. Got me a cold drink. It's been ooh, near 100 degrees outside today. But it's about 8 p.m. Where the temperature finally starts to cool off around 8 p.m. So yeah, there's my two puppies. Little Gypsy is the one-year-old Pitbull. And then she's uh, playing with Lucia. Yeah? A little over one and a half years old. Cane Corso, female. And then Ozzy over there standing guard. He's the alpha male. Cane Corso. Hey, where's that gypsy? Where's your rock? Man, she's getting big, y'all. Look at those paws on her. Goodness. I always say, you know, like for a, a dog to see how big they're going to get, sometimes you, I like to look at their paws. <laughs> Hers are huge. Compared to my other uh, adult female kind of corso, Dolce, which she has much bigger paws. Lurchy. Gypsy got it right. There's your rock. There's your rock. Gypsy. If you're just tuning in for the first time, this little pit bull puppy has a fascination with rocks. And she'll dig up these huge, almost like boulders. And she'll just carry them around all day. And the, they just woke up th from their nap, but she fell asleep with one of these rocks in her mouth. She carries them up on the bed with her. Gypsy. Oh, careful, baby. Hey, hey, Gypsy. Good Lord. She's really digging into that leg, that ham bone. Hi, Papa. What you got, us? What you got, us? Papa. See now, Ozzy's paws. Man, they're like a bear paw. Ozzy, Ozzy's the man, y'all. He's the big man on campus. So I'm about to have me another puppy, male puppy. Another male, kind of corso. I'm gonna reveal to you when I'm gonna get him. How, uh, what the who the breeder is, and who the. Uh, the parents of the litter are. I'm gonna reveal all that pretty soon. When it gets closer to the time, I've, re I've already got a deposit on that puppy. It's gonna be a beautiful black coat male from a really a, a world-renowned uh, kennel out in Serbia, in Eastern Europe. So super excited about that. Um, stay tuned for more info on that. I just don't like to reveal everything until until it's um, pretty close to the puppy just about being shipped. <laughs> so I just don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to mess anything up. But yeah, suffice it to say, there will be another male kind of corso in my pack. Whereas right now, Ozzy is the only male kind of corso. So that is going to be a challenge. Now what I will do is... I've already reached out to the breeder. I want to select. I have first pick male. So if I've paid for. Or will be paying for. I've already got the deposit. But we'll be paying for first pick male. And. With that you can. Kind of. Ask the breeder to help you select. A male. Or a, select a puppy that suits your. Um, pack dynamics. In your family. The energy. So. Um. I'm going to be selecting one that's not the most dominant pup in the litter. Yeah, so I don't want the most dominant dog in the litter. Um, because that male has to kind of uh, compete with Ozzy for dominance. It's going to be my breeding male. Ozzy's neutered, so 
Ozzy won't be breeding, but with two males in the litter, <clears throat> in the presence of a breeding female, which will be Lucia, of course there's going to be competition for breeding rights. And so I don't want a, a, an extremely dominant male that's going to constantly be trying to spar with Ozzy in a bad way. And so um, I'm going to pick one that's kind of middle of the road, kind of um, medium temperament. Look at these thistles. See what I, I talked about these thistle before. See that beautiful purple flower? Here it is. This is an invasive species. It's a beautiful th flower, but these are the seed heads. And so they're like kind of like dandelions where the wind catches a little seed pod. And there's just millions of them out here. Left unchecked, you can see how invasive they are. It's just entirely covering this this property. So yeah, I've picked up most of the ones on my property, but hey, baby girl. And this is another invasive species I gotta get rid of. I'm waiting for my tools to arrive. <sighs> Got something wrong with the trimmer, but anyway. A little tangent there on the yard. I know it's really out of control right now. So it's just me. I live alone out here. Um, and I plan to do all this myself. I have took a few days off of work so that I can tackle it. So I work full time, as many of you all know. And um, so it's just me. So I uh, got a lot to do. I got a lot on my plate. But I chip away at it. Bit by bit. Ozzy! Come on, Oz! Come on, Luchi! She's gonna, she's gonna pounce. Luchi! Get her, Gypsy! Get her stuck in Luchi! Get her, Gypsy! <laughs> Going in for the kill there. Ozzy! Ooh, but yeah, the temperature right now is just gorgeous. Ugh. What a difference a few hours of the day will make. Well, you know, like in Mexico, uh, you know, you, you hear about the, the siesta. So they w you work hard in the mornings, and then you take your siesta when it's really hot outside. And you pick it back up in the evening when it's cooled off. That's kind of how we work out here in Texas. So I'm actually going to trim some of the, the grass here in the middle in a minute when I get done with this video. But... Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I'm just loving it out here. Um, so yeah, about that, about the, about the puppy. Um, I don't know if many of y'all know this. Shout out to Paul uh, Zab, one of the subscribers. He really has been a, 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 a real help with me because he's getting first pick. He's getting first pick puppy from the litter. So the litter that. Lucia eventually will have with, with that import male. So he's really helped me a lot um, because first time breeding a, a kind of corso. So he brought it to my attention that something that I didn't know, which is very important to know. And I don't know if a lot of people realize this, especially people who, who are breeders, um, is that the, the CDC, which is the one, is the organization centers for disease control in the united states that regulate import puppies import of live live animals into the states well starting august 1st there's going to be a regulation that prohibits importing puppies younger than six months old y'all so no more getting puppies younger than six months old into the United States. Um, I mean, prior to that, you can get a puppy much younger, which to me is ideal because the bonding with the, with the owner happens, of course, way before six months of age. You can really train and bond your puppy, I think, better than prior to six months old. But, but people still import dogs and do very well with them six months and older. Uh, but yeah, so I will barely, barely, barely make that cutoff. So I'll be 
receiving that puppy hopefully just be before then okay lucia lucia's trying to get that sugar berry tree leaf let me see let me see baby here let me help her out come on lucia what's up love these they're really nutritious for them it's a hackberry tree sugarberry tree it's called sugarberry i think because the leaves are sweet i've actually never tasted them but but the dogs love them they're nutritious there she goes she's got one over there me like of a, a horse grazing <laughs> these dogs are so large like a horse look at her beautiful brindling pattern i just love it so she's going to be bred like i said with a black coat male it's going to make some beautiful puppies with hopefully a good variety of coat color but most important is temperament so like i said i'm going to be selecting a male that has kind of a middle moderate temperature or moderate temperament not super dominant and not like the runt of the litter either not the lowest ranking in the hierarchy of the litter but so it's just someone like which is exactly what lucia is i handpicked lucia as well i went out to california to the breeder from lucia for lucia and i originally had a deposit on a different puppy out of that litter but when I went to the breeder out in California, when uh, I was about to pick the puppy up, I, I got to observe all the puppies in that litter, how they interacted with each other. And I saw Lucia was, uh, she wasn't wagging her tail excessively like the other, some of the other puppies were. She was very like, you know, calm and confident. She wasn't the most dominant. She wasn't going around picking fights with the other puppies like some of the ones were. In fact, the one that I had the d deposit on originally, that's what she was doing. She was extremely dominant. She was going around, you know, picking the, the play fights with the other puppies and just really had her tail up all the time. Very, very confident, which is nice. And that would work for some packs. But with my... Uh, pack dynamic at the time it, it wouldn't have really worked because I had a very very dominant female which was Dolce which of course if you've been watching the channel you know that my younger brother Albert who lives um, near Houston has Dolce now he's going to be visiting me soon we'll see her a lot but anyway um so yeah that wouldn't have worked so similarly to that I'm going to be making sure that I, I at least to the best of my ability or the best of my knowledge i'm going to make sure that i select uh, a puppy from the litter that is similar to lucia's temperament and she, her temperament is absolutely perfect for my pack she's confident but not extremely dominant like dolce is so it works just perfectly in my pack and and so, with that being said, I want to make sure that um, there's less risk of, uh, of a fight to develop between my other male here, who's my alpha male. And I'll have it set up also where I can separate the two males. So, especially when Lucia goes into heat, I'm going to have that male probably go stay with my brother Albert until she comes out of heat because... The thing is, the male the male puppy won't be ready to, even biologically, if it can breed, it, it shouldn't be bred until, I believe, after a year of age. So, when Lucia goes into her next heat cycle in the presence of that male puppy, I don't want, them, I don't want him breeding with her too early. So, like I say, I'm going to have to remove him, separate him from the pack. I don't want um, him to be around Ozzy when Lucci is in heat, that's a very dangerous situation. So I'll have to find ways to to mitigate the risk. What is she doing of an altercation? Let me see, baby. Let me see. What's that? She is very cautiously approaching something here. What is it? Baby, 
Yeah, let me see. Oh, what is it? Is this it? It's just a piece of it's just a piece of wood there. I don't know what what the big deal was about that. Ozzy. Hey Papa. Gucci. But yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm gonna make sure that it, it's safe in the pack. But I do have my work cut out for me. Luckily I do have a place to separate them and I'll get another kennel as well. I'll get a kennel so I can separate them. But like I said, I, I live alone and I work full time. So I'm going to have to make sure that I'm able to separate them um, in a way that I don't have to leave one of them in a kennel for more than, you know, eight hours of, of the day. So, and it can be done. So yeah, super excited, y'all. Super, super excited. I'm gonna get some pictures very soon of the puppy and I'll post those for you as soon as I get them. The breeder said he would send me some pictures soon. He said they're too young right now, but. So yeah, I think about next week or so I'll have some pictures. Lucci, careful baby. Oh, she's so long legged. That's one thing I like about this kennel that I'm getting the puppy from. Um, Lucia's, I think, uh, grandmother comes from that kennel. Yeah, the grandmother, and I think that's I think that's where she gets her height because a lot of the kind of corsos from that from that um, a breeder out in Serbia have have a lot of good height on them, nice long legs. That's what I prefer. Goodness, y'all. I was watching something on YouTube from a kennel here in the United States. And oh, what's the name of the kennel? I guess I probably shouldn't mention it. I don't want to throw shade to, to somebody's kennel. Um, but just suffice it to say, the, the these these guys were talking about their kind of courses, how they did a genetic test on them. And it came back that they were predominantly Neapolitan Mastiff and Rottweiler with some Pitbull and a very small percentage of Cane Corso. And they were talking it up how that's okay, you know, that's doesn't mean anything bad. It's just the breed is developing, which I vehemently disagree with that. I think that a lot of these American bred dogs that are not imports I think there's more uh, chance of getting other breeds in the mix of the Cane Corso. So it's not a, a quote unquote pure Cane Corso. Um, they were even saying how the Wisdom DNA panel will likely show other breeds more than the Embark DNA panel genetic test. So I don't know. But my uh, my DNA panel that I used on all my kind of corso shows 100% kind of corso with with no health abnormalities. So I'm gonna test with wisdom just to just to see if that's true. I'm gonna test with another DNA panel called Wisdom and see if it comes back as 100% kind of corso. But but yeah, that's why I'm getting the import puppy to be my breeding male for Lucia. I, I just don't want to risk any kind of American breeder. Well, a lot of American breeders do import, so that's different, you know. A lot of their, like I know Sinza Tempo, she also imports a lot of her, her breeders, her breeding males and females. As a matter of fact, I think they're also some of them from the, the kennel that I'm going to be using. But, um, but I, I don't know, y'all. It's I, Do your research, that's all I'll say. Just definitely do your research. I don't think a kind of corso out of America, a bred in America, is necessarily going to be the same as as the ones out of Europe. I, I really prefer the ones that are bred in Europe, for the most part. It's a really generalized statement, but I, th I think that they're closer to the true, the true um, kind of corso, the true breed standards. Luci.
Um, but yeah, just consider that though. If you're looking to import a kind of Corso after August 1st this year, 2024, just realize that you probably won't be getting one imported um, younger than six months old due to this new CDC regulation in the United States anyway. I don't know what it is in other countries. Comment down below how, if you know what, it, how it's, if that's true for other countries and what your import um, regulations are. Is there anybody, I know there's some subscribers from India and I'm curious if you have a kind of corso in India, um, where the, what breeders you used and do you import from other countries into India and, and what are the regulations? I know like for the United States, it depends on if the dog is being imported from a country that has a high prevalence of rabies. The requirements are different. There, there's, there are more stricter uh, regulations on on that. But Serbia is not a uh, high risk, rabies high risk country. So luckily, I think Romania is. But anyway, it's, it's out there for anyone to look up. If you're in the United States, this go to the CDC website and just Google that. Well, y'all, I'm going to start uh, gearing up here to do some trimming of the grass. I got one of my weed eaters working. It's not the heavy duty one, but I think I can do some light trimming, some light trimming work out here before it gets dark. Hope everyone's having a good day, good evening, or wherever you are on the side of the globe, whatever side of the globe you're on. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.